Deepika, what am I looking at right now? Uh, so this is our Athelis device. It's basically uh, at-home blood monitoring. So what we see as, you know, what we use as the thermometer, we see this as the more uh, robust line of defense. So, you know, you have your temperature, now you know your counts, and with that information, you can make a much more informed decision about your health. Okay, but not everyone needs to do their blood count every day or have something like this in the home. This is specifically for who? So right now, uh, for chemotherapy patients, for uh, people undergoing uh, you know, different uh, medications that drop certain counts, like dropping your platelet counts, your white blood cell counts, people that are on GCSFs, which are uh, growth colony stimulating factors. Um, that need to know when certain counts are dropping. And um, you know, even for an individual who uh, is getting sick uh, chronically, uh, it, this is something that, uh, that would be very beneficial for them. Right, I was talking to your co-founder earlier, mm -hmm. and he was mentioning that people could eventually have this in the home to detect if they have the flu. Yeah, so um, bacterial, looking at the difference of bacterial versus viral is something that, uh, you know, a few, there have been a few different publications on it on how you can use white blood cell counts and specifically your white blood cell differential, your neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio uh, to determine whether something is a bacterial or a viral infection. What's the story behind this? How did you come up with it? A couple years ago, uh, when we were still in college, we uh, were playing around with the idea of creating a device or a system with your smartphone that could do malaria detection. Um, and, uh, you know, we found that that was pretty simple for us to do and that there was just so much more that we could do, especially with computer vision and all the progress that's been made um, from the ImageNet paper. And so, you know, we thought this was a good opportunity to look at that and see, you know, what are the most often ordered blood test. What is most commonly ordered blood test? The complete blood count, the CBC. All right, so let's take the CBC and let's see if we can make it happen in a matter of minutes from a drop of blood anywhere. Um, and so that's kind of how we set out to do it. And we really approached it as a research project first and now uh, you know, really addressing it and validating it as a company. Now when you say a drop of blood from anywhere, anyone who's been in Silicon Valley is going to go, this sounds exactly like Theranos, this sounds like uh, something that might be a little bit sketchy. What do you have to say for that? How, how is it not like Theranos? So I think what's really important to understand is that uh, what we're doing right now is not so different from what the gold, true gold standard is considered to be. Uh, there is a whole field of medicine dedicated to doctors who take a couple drops of blood, generate a blood smear manually, and physically look at it under the microscope counting different artifacts, counting cells, looking at different morphologies, shapes, and colors under the microscope. What we're doing here is simply, you know, automating that and, uh, you know, looking at it in a more robust way, given that, you know, we have the help of machine learning and, you know, dozens of libraries that we're pulling from. And you also have images. a background in biology and yes. you also, uh, you're not promising one drop of blood can detect 200 different diseases. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's really important that, uh, we're focusing on the CBC right now, um, and we cannot do every single chemical panel, and we don't claim to do that. Uh, when we do our validation, it's looking at our device and the drop that you're getting from your finger, the results our device shows, and the results that the Beckman counter or a lab core or you know, a typical gold standard lab would show. And we just look at those results co comparatively just for the CBC right now. What's the alternative to something like this in your home? What, what are people normally are doing right now? So right now, people aren't actually doing white blood cell counts from their home. Um, typically, when we've talked to individuals who have to go, you know, for individuals going through chemotherapy or people who are worried about a leukemia uh, relapse, uh, they have to go uh, monthly, weekly, however often, to uh, LabCorp or to, you know, your typical um, 
you know, lab that's attached to your doctor's office and get a venous draw from there and then wait a couple days to then get your results. So there's no really uh, way to do this with your finger and no real way to do this with a quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. Okay, so show me how it works. Okay, great. So, uh, so we have this device um, and it comes with test strips. And so this is the Athelis test strip and uh, you need a lancet too. So this is nothing fancy, this is just a lancet um, that people use to uh, prick themselves for, you know, glucose monitoring. So you're gonna prick me or you're gonna prick you? What, what do you mean? <laughs> How do you feel you, about it? You can prick me. I mean, yeah? let's see if I, yeah, okay, let's, let's see do if it. I have a good blood cell count. All right, let's do it. Okay. okay. So one, two, three. Okay. That was that, easy. That happened. That happened. Okay. So you wipe away your first straw. Okay. And then we have... Oh, you got it. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. That's, yeah. Oh, that's just a tiny little bit. Yeah. If you can see the blood is flowing through here. And basically, uh, we're looking for this channel, this window to fill up like this. Um, and then once it's filled up, like it is now, you just put it in the device. And so basically what this test strip is doing, it's making all of those cells into a very clean monolayer. It's getting our custom uh, chemicals and stains that are inside that to start interfacing with the cells so that we can image the right artifacts that we wanna look at. And then you have an app that it shows up with your results? Yes, so, so now uh, we go to the app and so we're starting another blood test. So we go begin test. And now we wait for the results. Sounds like it's doing something. Yes, and in, if you can see, there's a light. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so the test is just gonna take a couple minutes now. Um, we're always trying to make it faster. Um, so it, it should just take a couple minutes. And he was saying that eventually you'll even put these in hospital waiting rooms. And yeah, to triage mm -hmm. um, what we're finding. Yeah, that's, it was actually, we, you know, when, when we come up with ways that, you know, to use it, a lot of what we thought, you know, what would be the immediate use case was, you know, so different from what people actually wanted. Huh. Um, we would go, you know, to talk to a doctor and we'd be in the waiting room and you'd just see the traffic, you know, in the waiting room go up and up and up. And there was no way they had a triage nurse and the triage nurse would just talk to people and look at their symptoms, but then they would have to take a draw and, the whole point of triage is that you're not spending... Right, you're like, reducing the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could also put this maybe in um, remote areas of the world that don't right. have access to a hospital. Yeah, or... exactly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of um, clinics, even in the United States, uh, we're pretty, you know, we live in San Francisco, Palo Alto area where like the labs are attached to medical facilities. Um, but a lot of places that's not the case, you know, where you have to go to a lab to do a blood draw and then come back mm -hmm. to the medical facility. And that's just kind of a bummer because compliance is really low at that point. Not many people have time to take to go to a doctor's appointment and then on top of that, go to a separate lab, wait for that and then. Mm. So, so your white blood cell count is 8K per microliter. So that's very normal, very average. Your neutrophil count is around 57%. That's also very normal. Your neutrophils are your infection fighting cells mm -hmm. and uh, your lymphocytes um, is around 43%. Those are results and then you can kind of look at your history of results here. So say you do another test every day, you can see and then if, say you notice a spike, you're alerted about that. Um, you can alert your doctor about that and correlate it to symptoms too. Okay, well it sounds really, uh, it sounds exciting. It sounds like something that could be potentially very useful. Yeah, hopefully that's the goal. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with me. Yeah, great. Thank you so much.